It was great to hear you. Thanks. It was great hearing your, your recording. Yeah, it's in the, in the school room, you know, it's a, we, we do what we can uh, in these circumstances. <laughs> right. Have you been doing okay through all of this? Yeah, so it's okay. It's uh, harder than usual, but we made it. So. Right. Your, your, your command of this is so impressive. Your, your playing is fantastic. Um, what I miss from you is the variety of characters in the, in the piece. Do, it, do, you, do you have an idea what I mean? Uh, you mean this between the sections, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, the, that you can distinguish the different parts of it more from each other. OK. At the beginning, right away, what character do you have in mind at the beginning? Beginning is, like, I don't know, for me, it's like a Hungarian dance, probably, something like this. I'm with you. Yeah. I think it has to have that. Uh, that quality. It's interesting also that he writes Allegro non troppo. I don't know if you play it too fast. That's not necessarily what I mean. But what does he mean by non troppo? Why does he say that, do you think? Well, he's afraid people play it too fast, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's it. <laughs> when I think about it, I. I think that there's the rhythmic things that he does need to have a certain kind of swagger or panache or spice. You know, they're even the first bar, and so if you gloss over any of this of these rhythmic um, characters, we we lose a little bit the that panache. You know panache? You know that? The, the I mean, word? I don't know the word, but I know what you mean. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> yeah, so, so that it has, it has, uh, so it's the difference between or if you know what I mean. Um, you know, Leon Fleischer used to say, great rhythm is when you play the note as late as possible without being late, which is a strange thing to say, but I think we know what he means. And that's what I miss when you, when you start this movement. I miss that feeling that everything's really taken care of and, and is given its, its exact measure. Would you mind trying the beginning again? I think you're already on to something. I, I'm already more excited hearing you. That you're doing more interesting things with it. Can can I ask you? Would in the left hand, can you pay more attention to the to the sixteenths in the left hand and how you use them, how you shape them? Okay. Um, maybe when the right hand has some space. Exactly. In between. That exactly. Okay. Um, I think you can take advantage of all that uh, to to create greater interest. Would you mind one more time in tempo? Okay, great. I now have a question. 
when you get right where we stopped, so measure 17, is it the same or different character? I mean, it's, it's in the same atmosphere, but it's like another person or something. That's a great way to put it. I, it's, hard to, it's hard to find words for that, but I think that's, that's it. And I don't get to switch. Uh, even though he says forte there, it still isn't the same kind of strength as at the very beginning, is it? You have to get us already out of the previous mood because of when it goes to the più dolce. But I think all the way from 17 already, it's as you said, different persons talking. Can you try and make that shift? Uh, maybe we start from the orchestra enters or? Great. Can you take a look at 24, measure 24? Mm -hmm. uh, somehow you need to give us the sense that it's off. It's not in the right place, right? On purpose. Mm -hmm. And somehow I feel like you can make uh, you can enjoy that more and make it more interesting for, for the listener. If you do too plainly, dotty, 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 it could be on the beat, off the beat. And then you're, you're setting up that crescendo too. How about from 17 again? Great that passage, how you sing the top, but don't neglect your left hand too. You, I think your left hand can support that top more. The sensitivity, the first two notes of each of those. Oh, does it mean it's too neglected? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Not enough care. Mm -hmm. Would you mind 46 again? Thank you. 
I enjoyed this uh, before. Do you have letter A1? Yeah. I think what you were doing before A1 was you got the right idea. It was singing through all of that. That sounded great. Then at A1, uh, take a look at bar 78. What, what's going on there? What's, uh, what, what? what's happening, bar 78, for you? 78? Uh, you mean the, the musical ideas, or? Uh-huh. Uh, I don't know, it's like, <laughs> it's hard to say. Uh, I don't know, it's like someone trying to... <laughs> That's great. That's what I didn't hear. Okay, maybe more... Uh... That's great. That's... That's the right word for it, is this? <laughs> Trying to uh, catch them. Maybe not that sad. <laughs> right. Uh, but something noticeably different from right before, right? And then it goes back in 82. Uh, uh, and then... Just before that, I think also you you can pay more attention. D oh, D oh. Do you see in uh, 75, 76? Uh -huh. the, the, and even in 74 with that diminuendo. Da -chi -oh, chi -oh. There's a kind of sighing figure there, right? So the, the quarter note shouldn't be as strong as the eighth. T T you want to play once more uh, 66? that had a lot more variety. I, you had my attention. That was that was great. And then could we go ahead to the uh, B flat major section. So 181 is it? 181. top I, i'm not convinced this microphone's working great but i think what i'm hearing that the top sounds really good i think you have to think about how you're supporting at the lower octave in the left hand i mean uh the, where right when you start oh, okay uh... and yes exactly and also the doubling of the upper line in the in the left hand ah okay okay I think it's worth uh, uh, playing with the balance of that. Obviously, the top should sing, but how much you support it in the left hand and how much the bass line uh, is, is making the shape of the phrase, I think is, could be more interesting that way. And then also the phrase itself, 
I, I don't hear what inflection you would like to make yet. I mean, I think you have a lot of options. Uh, you could, you could do that. You could. Or you could do the fa do fa. Some choice, if you see what I mean. There, it, it, it's lacking a of a shape. The phrase, the shape of the phrase, needs more more inflection from you. And then. Uh, I think 197 is another change. Yeah, I mean, it's like a, it's like a solo. So. Yeah. So it's... Um, so, I mean, I mean, probably it could be more free. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, maybe. It's worth trying. Can we do all that once more from uh, the double bar? think at 2.22, it's a little bit like you lost your way, trying to find where the, how to get back from somehow, I think you had to leave breadcrumbs or something. I, I really enjoyed what you were doing, uh, the passage we were talking about. That sounded very beautiful. And I don't think that was too much at 197, too much freedom. It sounded very good. Yeah, I think it's okay. <laughs> I think it's okay. <laughs> it's, it's not so many places we have uh, no orchestra. No, no, that's right. But I think now, we, uh, and then the next thing I thought was very satisfying, your trills, the dolce, that's beautiful. But then I missed, I missed that quality at 222. Of of soft and lost. Okay. And then a new color when you finally figure out where you are in two twenty six. And you notice that's where it goes to piano dolce instead of pianissimo. Yeah, so it's a little bit more. Yeah, exactly. I love what you do. Uh, you do that so beautifully in um, 231. I think you need a hint of that also in 227. Going out of two note slurs and into more legato. Okay. Yeah, I just hear the difference with the, the slur. Before. Exactly. Would you mind going back to the trills again? Going from the trills? Maybe a B to zero. Anywhere, anywhere you like is fine. Yeah. 
you're getting lost. <laughs> that was beautiful. And then this next passage, after the orchestra does the fugato, and you come back in. I don't know how, how you hear this. Um, you might hear it very differently from me, and that, that's, that's fine. For me, it, it is, it's a kind of elevated, transcendent feeling. Do you get that at all? So there's something in the color and the articulation that you want to get away from the bite of how it is normally in D minor. And then this F major one has more, it's more tranquil in a way. Does that seem right to you? Yeah, I mean, it's like, it's like a kind of a little bit of a, of light, you know, after a kind of uh, storm or something. So. Yeah, exactly. I get that too. That's exactly what I'm wanting to hear. When you when you come in, it needs a it needs that mood, and I think you get it from from the articulation being gentler and the and the color that you get. Also, I think the secret is a little bit in the accompaniment, how you sh how you use the left hand, how you voice it. I mean, I use some pedal. I think that's good. Yeah, because otherwise it's a bit too uh, similar to the start. I I agree with you. So you want me to try it? Uh, you want to try it? Sure. Sounds great. That sounds fantastic. I'm still not um, convinced by the F major place somehow. It, it gets very, uh, you speed it up along the way. And I think that's where you lose the, the character you start with, if possible. Would you mind trying it once more just to keep the tranquility that you get at the beginning of it? It's later that you, when, you, when you speed up that I lose that. You mean like where do I start to speed up? Uh, it, play it, and I can I can say exactly. There. Okay. There. <laughs> Yeah, if you speed up less, it stays better in character. 
I also think you can still use the interesting notes in the left hand, I, like 277, the G, F, E, E flat. Isn't that great? Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, like a hidden voice. What do you say? Like a hidden voice. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. If you do as you did, if we hear the G F E E flat, then you pick it up again, E flat D D flat. Uh-huh. Okay, so continue. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, now it doesn't feel like it, it feels like it's in a completely different character in, in a good way. And then do you want to do uh, the big cadenza? Uh, the cadenza directly? Uh, if you want to do something before, sure. I mean, write on it either way. It's pretty much the same. <laughs> I just had a question, you know, for for three thirty eight. Three three eight. Uh, no, sorry, three sixty eight. Three six eight. Yes. You know, do, at the end, do we uh, do we make the crescendo to the orchestra, or like, uh, or it's a diminuendo, or whatever? I don't know what. Uh, maybe diminuendo is more logic, no? Or we don't really care, we just go and orchestra you what? I'm trying not to answer you too quickly because I know I have a, a bias. I'm used to hearing a crescendo even. I'm yeah. used to hearing it go all the way to the end, but no, I know. your diminuendo the idea is not, I mean, that's, that could be very interesting. Because the crescendo is, I know, it's like the common way. Right, exactly. So I don't want to just say, because that's actually a great question. You know what John Cage said once? You know, that is a very good question. question. I would hate to ruin it with an answer. <laughs> but even no joke, that's a very, I want you to, you, or would you be willing to try it? I'd love to hear it, see how it works with a dim. Uh, okay, so we try both, I guess. Yeah. Uh, Still sounds better. I don't know. Me too. Me too. <laughs> I do too. I'm glad you tried it though. Because it's an interesting thought. I mean, and it wasn't terrible when you did it. You know, it was interesting. It sets up the orchestra so differently that way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I think the crescendo is better too.
I, I feel like you're missing an opportunity here somehow. Something about, and maybe it's because of the microphone, but it's something about the sonority. Rather than thinking of this as passage work, it's also about creating this sonority that is rising up, you know, that it says, is a richer texture I think you can get. And then when you get to 385, you know, that wonderful chromatic passage, I missed your enjoyment of the intricacy of that harmony, of highlighting the chromaticism of it. I mean, you know that Brahms was one of the first subscribers to the complete works of Bach. And he got he got it in installments because they were public as they were publishing it. You get the next volume next month. You get the next volume, and he kept a notebook of what he was learning from because he would get the next volume of Bach and he would study it. And he kept a notebook of of thoughts or reactions or things he wanted to observe in the music. And there's something for me. I think of that here because there's something so much like uh, you know the D minor uh, fantasy and fugue of Bach. Chromatic fantasy and fugue. Yeah. There's something about the, this passage that has that quality of the the enjoyment of the chromaticism, the, the the twisting of the chromaticism. I think if you go too rapidly through, or uh, we miss that, we miss the complexity of that harmony. And it's so interesting because before that, it's one harmony, three bars. Another harmony, three bars. Another harmony, three bars. Now it's a new harmony every beat. You know what I mean? Would you mind trying once more with, with that in mind? Was, for me, that was much more satisfying. I hope you like it. Uh, for me, that's so much more interesting and, and beautiful. And uh, that was terrific. And then what about this, the, the next bit after the trills? happens uh, I think your idea I can hear your idea and I think it's beautiful the way you're opening it up and go heading to the top and everything I think one of the reasons it's not quite working is it crescendos too soon I think if you can stay piano a little longer you'll have more of a blossom at the top like you're trying to get Another question for I think that works better already. I have another question for you. Does the crescendo go past forte or does it go to the forte in 402? I mean, to the score, it's probably going to the forte. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah, okay. So maybe still a little bit less before. I'm wondering. Because I, I, I think I go too much here. So after that, I do like a diminuendo to the point. Exactly. And I'm wondering if, if it's worth it to try do, mi, re, do, re, si, sol, la, if it goes all the way into, into 402.
what did, what did you think? I think it's more logic. <laughs> Maybe. I also think going into H, uh, obviously it shouldn't be strictly in tempo or anything, but I would love to hear more distinctly the change of the written out retard. Uh, where? Uh, right into going into H. Oh, I don't have the letters. Uh, oh, um, it's the 407, 408, 409. Okay. Uh, you mean more writ? Wait, no, a more obvious the changes in note values. Ah, okay. So we hear, you know, ya ta 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 Yeah. And would you mind if, uh, playing for me again uh, the, the Menomoso section, the, the D major section? Your trills sound fantastic. They're great. That's those are thrilling. That's thrilling. I love that how you do that. Um, I don't find the do piano dolce satisfying. It's it sounds uh, very. Um, so the the character doesn't seem quite right to me. And you're the there's the slur, and then there's the dots with the slur. I think the dots with the slur is actually quite a long articulation. Uh, you mean a second two notes later? Uh-huh. Longer? Longer. Okay. Yeah, it's probably more like the orchestra. I mean, uh... Yes, exactly, exactly. And then the character is, is more dolce. Okay. Uh,
You sound great. That's terrific. That's thrilling, uh, uh, that, that coda. So wonderful. It's a pleasure to hear you. Do you think the tempo is OK, or it's going to be a little faster? The coda tempo? I mean, from the presto, I don't feel any math. Yeah, I think it's good. OK. It felt very good. It felt, it, it felt, uh, it sounds it sound very in a, in a good way that very sturdy and actually i wanted to ask you know before just before the cadenza uh, at 94 98 yeah yeah do we do like a retardando here or uh, that's the million dollar question again it's so funny, you know. I've done this piece with so many different pianists where I'm conducting. Because there is a there's a fermata out there, so logically we don't do a ritardando, but so I have notes from different people. <laughs> strictly in tempo, molto ritardando, poco ritardando, strictly in tempo. I've done it every way. Uh, it, I'll give you my opinion. I think if you slow down just a little, basically for both bars and don't make more retard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's the most successful version. And then place the last note, the downbeat. I think that one, that's, for me, that's the most satisfying I've ever heard anyone do. It, the one I found less, if you go absolutely in tempo, that's very successful too. The one that I think is not that I've I've even done it because you know I didn't want to fight with the guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, but the, the one that I think is least successful is if you slow down through the two bars. Yeah, so that one for me always feels artificial. <laughs> 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 Something just doesn't satisfy me about that. But I do like that little bit, you like pulling the reins just a little bit. But the, if you want to go right out in tempo, that can be very exciting too. Even if you drive it to the next downbeat, it, it can be really thrilling. <laughs> and if you do that, I think it has to do a little bit how you want to set up your cadenza too. Because if you do go straight into the downbeat, it works great that you leap into those arpeggios just immediately. And if you do a little bit of time, boom, then your arpeggios are more grand. So it's a little bit of uh, the one thing influencing the other, I think. I think placing a little bit is, is good because you know the arpeggios has an excellent rando, so it's better that we start a little bit. Yep, that's a good way to look at it. You know what this is. <laughs> <laughs> I really, I really do have all those notes from different times, and all contradicting each other. That's wonderful. Yeah, it's always like this in a conductive book or something. <laughs> Pardon, say that again. No, I, I have uh, you know played with other conductors and they say the same thing. Oh, really? Sometimes they erase in the past because otherwise it makes them up for the present. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this was a real pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot. Wonderful to hear you. Thanks for your for your good ideas. Stay healthy. You too. <laughs>